Hey guys, this is going to be another quick Linux command video. Check the link in the description for more info and for copy and paste examples. The Linux IO stat command is used to display CPU and IO stats. Um, so on a multiprocessor system, CPU stats are calculated system-wide as averages among all processors. So the IO stat command is part of the sysstat package. So it if it's not installed by default on your system, you're gonna to have to go ahead and install it. Check the link in the description for you know all the commands for and package names for your specific distribution. But if you are on if you're on Debian or Ubuntu, you are gonna go ahead and use this command right here to actually hold on. So this command right here, sudo apt install sysstat. So I've already installed it, but that's what you would run. And if you're root like I am now, you don't need sudo, but if you're not root, just use sudo. So that's how you'd install it on Ubuntu or Debian. So um, the d basic usage of the command would be, uh, so you can actually run it without any parameters like this, iostat, and it just prints out one report. Notice I have a lot of loopback devices here that clutters up my output. But here are my actual disks and the statistics for them. And um, let's see here. So let's go ahead and uh, so that's the default usage with no parameters. Now, if you specify, so the first two parameters for standard usage would be interval and then count. So you could tell it to repeat every one second and to do this three times, for example. So every one second, it's going to report, print a report out for three times, right? And you could change this to 30 times if you want it to repeat 30 times. And if you leave this out, it's just gonna repeat forever, every one second. So here we go, repeating over and over and over. Um, then uh, you, you could change this to every three seconds if you want, it would be a bit slower. So every three seconds, repeat nine times. And you know, there, there you go, you see that you know, every three seconds it updates. So there's that, <clears throat> that's the basic usage for the command. Another nice thing I wanna show you is JSON output. So iostat-o JSON, one four, so every one second uh, for four times. And the uh, output is going to be in JSON format, which is great if you wanna access this from a script or something like that, and you wanna be able to parse the output very easily. So run it like this, and it prints out a bunch of nice JSON output inside a nice, uh, you know, nice series of hashes and arrays. So that, that that's pretty terrific right there. Shows you all the different disk devices, most of which are loopback devices and pointless. Anyways, um, what else here? So there's a bunch of options. I'm not gonna go over each one individually. All the most important things are, um, you, you know what, I should probably cover some of these. So I, I covered the most important examples, but Let's try this out. We're, we're going to tell it to, we're just going to use this default right here. Now, you could do a dash X for extended statistics. So you're going to see a whole lot more statistics here, you know, a whole bunch of extra fields and stuff, right? So um, you can also make it the output pretty by um, specifying, you know, dash P R E T T Y like this. And um, this need to be two dashes, there you go. So pretty output, um, so human readable. And uh, yeah, nothing too exciting there. All right, so anyways, you, you can uh, you can add uh, human readable sizes with the dash H. So the sizes will be in K, meg, or gig, or like gigabytes right here. Now, the other thing you could do is you could specify, instead of pretty, you could specify human for human readable so human readable sizes this this will give you human so human like this is human readable sizes now if you say human now if you were to so you have pretty and human right so if you if you wanted to combine these you could do a dash h that's what it does it combines the pretty output with human readable sizes right now another thing you can do is a is um dash dash compact if you don't want to break it up into sub reports um useful with the pretty um it's useful with the pretty option so anyways 
uh, not a common thing that I would normally be using. Now, uh, if you want to display partitions, you can do a dash P and you can display partitions. So instead of just, you, you know, SDA, SDB, SDC, SDD, and SDE and F, right? The SDF, instead of just S, the disk SDF right here, you're going to specify all five partitions on SDF, right? So that's kind of useful if you want to see the, the stats for individual partitions. Now, if you specify all, you're going to see all partitions, even the non-used ones. And you can also specify a specific device. So say, for example, SDF5. So P for partition, and S, you can specify the partition, SD. Um, you know what? Let's see if we can do that specific. So you can do that specific partition, or you could do just SDF, the disk name, and it's going to specify all the partitions for that specific device, but just that device. So that's pretty nice too. Um, so good stuff. I think that's all pretty useful and, and good to be aware of. Um, let's see, useful. All right, so there are other options, less common options that you may or may not want. Check the link in the description for those. And the even more less common options, just check the man page if you want the absolute full um, listing of options, but I, I've covered the most useful ones and there are some semi-useful ones on the on my page and the link in the description. So anyways, let's cover reports. Let's cover like what some of this does. So if you run IO stat, let's see here. So and all right, so CPU report, so you can have CPU utilization report up here and device utilization report over here. So um, let's see, CPU utilization, you're gonna have user, that's just the you know user level application usage. Um, and uh, then if you want user level with nice priority, that's nice. And then um, system is going to be, you know, kernel level stuff. So the amount of time spent at the system level, IO weight over here is going to be, you know, percentage of time that the CPU or CPUs were idle during outstanding um, disk IO requests. Now steel is going to be, um, you, you know, it's the percentage of time spent in involuntary wait while the hypervisor is surp supervising or servicing rather a uh, another virtual processor. So idle, the actual idle value here is the percentage of time that the CPU or CPUs were idle and the system did not have outstanding IO requests. So there's that. Yeah, so over here, um, yeah, so TPS is, um, you know, transfers or IO requests per second and uh, multiple logical requests per IO requests. And a transfer is, you know, it's of indeterminate size. So, um, you know, they're, they're basically batched together. So, um, yeah, just, just be aware of that. Now, um, this would be kilobits read per second, kilobits written per second, and um, kilobits discarded per second. And then you, you can see like the totals, um, you know, this is how much was read, how much was written, and how much was discarded per device. So if you look down here, you can see some actual values here for the actual physical disks. And you see for these loopback devices, it's just reading stuff. So there, there's that. And what, what else should we call? Yeah, so that, that's the, the default output. And um, one, one thing I wanted to show you, last thing I want to show you, I think, is going to be that you can actually select which report you want. So um, let's see here. There is an option to specify dash C. So with IOSTAT, you can say dash C, and that's going to just give you the CPU report. And if you do a dash D, that's going to only give you the device utilization report without the CPU report. So yeah, there, there's that. Notice you don't have the that CPU report at the top here. So you can split those out with a dash C and a dash D. So that's that's the last thing I wanted to make sure I showed you. And that's about everything I wanted to show you for the IO stat. 
command today. This should put, make you uh, somewhat confident with the IO stack command, especially if you've never used it or never looked up what all the parameters and output actually meant. This should get you pretty far along the way. There's more to know, more details and nuances, but this is all the stuff I wanted to cover for today. Remember, check the links in the description for more info. Hit the subscribe button for more useful content like this. We also have a ton of other more interesting content covering things like coding, hardware, software, servers, Raspberry Pis, 3D printing, and a whole lot more. Hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video.